Hello, I'm Dr. Sarah Thomasy, a comparative ophthalmologist at UC Davis. And I wanted to thank um, the Bouvier Health Committee for inviting me to give this update on glaucoma in your beautiful breed. Uh, I am sad I can't be there in person at your national specialty, um, but I'm appreciative of, give, of the opportunity to give this, this talk to you. And so if you have any questions or want to reach me, um, here's my email address and I'll, I'll have it at the end of the talk as well. So why I care about glaucoma? A glaucoma is a very common cause of irreversible blindness that we see in, um, in our canine or dog patients. Uh, it's, it's quite painful and people describe it like a migraine headache. Uh, dogs can exhibit signs including lethargy, difficulty sleeping, tearing, and squinting as a result of this pain. And you can see here's a Bouvier um, uh, that has glaucoma before this Bouvier's eyes were removed. And um, the owner noted how much the, the dog was laying around all the time sleeping, uh, likely because of the pain. So oftentimes, uh, our mainstay of treatment for this disease, especially late in the disease course, when the eye is blind and painful, is actually eye removal. And here is the Bouvier that we saw in the previous picture um, that, that, that has had both eyes removed as a result of glaucoma. So in order to understand glaucoma, I'm going to uh, uh, discuss um, some anatomy of the, of the canine or dog eye. And so we have a couple of important structures pictured here. The first that I wanna point out is this structure called the ciliary body. And this is what produces the fluid or the aqueous humor that nourishes the inner um, structures of the eye. And so the ciliary body produces the fluid. The fluid flows through the pupil and out this drainage angle here at the iris and the corneal junction, and that's called the irido-corneal angle. And so glaucoma is always a disease where there is obstruction of the irido-corneal angle. It's never due to overproduction of the fluid. And when the fluid builds up within the eye, it doesn't have anywhere else to go. And it increases the pressure, the intraocular pressure within the eye, which damages some important structures in the back of the eye, principally the optic nerve here and the neural inner coat of the, of the eye called the retina. And so and a good analogy to think about is that the uh, is to think about a sink. And so when we um, have our normal sink and we have water flowing and the drain is open, um, you know, we have this balance. And that's similar to the balance in a normal eye where there's fluid being produced and fluid flowing out. Now, when we have a clog um, in our sink, um, it's going to overflow. Uh, because there's still continuous production. And that's what's happening in an eye with glaucoma, that there's reduced uh, outflow of the fluid. And because there's no place for it to go within the eye, then pressure builds up. So there are a number of causes of glaucoma in dogs. And when we talk about primary glaucoma, that's inheritable predisposition for it. And there are two types of primary glaucoma. There's open angle, which we see in beagles and Norwegian elk hounds, and there's actually a gene associated with that. It's an Adams-10 mutation that causes that. And then in Bouvier's, the pathophysiology is, is different. It's angle closure glaucoma. And this happens, this is the much more common cause of glaucoma in dogs, this um, angle closure glaucoma. And what happens with angle closure glaucoma is the angle um, closes abruptly and the pressure spikes very, very 
um, severely and quickly. And so that makes it more difficult to manage than open angle glaucoma where the pressure steadily and slowly, slowly but steadily rises. So it's easier to um, catch open angle glaucoma because it um, is, is not as, uh, it does not progress as quickly. And open angle glaucoma is actually the most common cause in people as well. In addition to primary glaucoma, there are a number of ca secondary causes of glaucoma. So um, you can have inflammation in your eye lead to glaucoma. Trauma could cause glaucoma. Ocular tumors can cause glaucoma. So can cataracts or lens dislocation. And so um, we, whenever we diagnose glaucoma, we want to figure out as an ophthalmologist whether it's primary or secondary. So what do we know about glaucoma in Bouvier's? Uh, this uh, prevalence study by Gillette and colleagues looked at breed-related glaucomas in purebred dogs. And in the 1980s and 1990s, um, Bouvier's were the 27th most common breed with glaucoma. And it was about, it was a little bit less than 1% of Bouvier's that were looked at that had glaucoma. But we can see um, in the um, late 1990s and early 2000s that this has actually increasing, uh, that glaucoma is increasing in prevalence in Bouvier's and they were the 19th most common breed with this, this disease. We can see that here. And if we think about a disease that's, you know, one in a hundred dogs is getting, we can, we consider that quite common. And so, um, you know, it, glaucoma is certainly a very important disease in Bouvier's, which is why the health committee um, is focused on it. It's, it's why I'm, I'm giving you this, one of the reasons we're, we're having this conversation. What else do we know about glaucoma and Bouvier's? So, a major risk factor for primary angle closure glaucoma, the most common cause of glaucoma in Bouvier's, is pectinate ligament dysplasia. And the pectinate ligament is a structure that's part of the iridocorneal angle. Uh, in under normal conditions, it looks like this. It, it, pectinate actually means comb. And should it, so it should look like a, a comb with, you know, the different to, you know, teeth of the comb visible. Uh, but in Bouvier's uh, pectinate ligament dysplasia, where we have tissue like this spanning the iridocorneal angle with, uh, if we're lucky, these little tiny flow holes, this is, this is dysplastic tissue. And, and this is something that the Bouvier, um, it, it, um, generally, it is something that the dog is born with, although we'll see that there are some cha age-related changes that can happen to the irritable corneal angle. And in three different studies that looked at the prevalence of pectinate ligament dysplasia, we can see that it's very, very common in Bouvier. 75% of uh, Bouvier's in the Netherlands had this, 61% um, in Wisconsin and 38% in Switzerland. So we know that this important risk factor um, for glaucoma is quite common in Bouvier's. And so the way for us to um, diagnose pectinate ligament dysplasia is by this technique called gonioscopy. And gonioscopy is just, um, it, it means looking at the irritable corneal angle. And we can see how this is performed. We take a, um, a hard plastic lens and place it on the eye, and then the, it changes the uh, incidence of uh, light. It changes the angle of reflection in order for us to see the irritable corneal angle, which is right here. And in this uh, close-up image, we can see a very normal region, our, our pectinate, our comb-like structure, and then a region where we just saw on the uh, electron microscopy, here's what it would look like in, in a, in a um, canine patient, a dog patient. And we can see this sheet of iris-like tissue and these little 
holes in it though, that we call flow holes. So here's the pectinate ligament dysplasia. And so what is the risk if your um, Bouvier has pectinate ligament dysplasia, how, um, what is its risk for getting primary angle closure glaucoma? And um, the health committee uh, was really instrumental in um, funding and supporting this extremely important study. No, um, it, it, I would say, you know, no one um, is able to collect 10 years worth of data like this study that was done out of Wisconsin. So this is an extraordinary study um, to help um, guide um, you, you know, breed recommendations for your club. And so when we look at this data um, out of Wisconsin, uh, we can see that they looked at almost 100 Bouviers. And so they found that any pectinate ligament dysplasia, regardless of severity, increased angle closure risk by at least 2.3 fold. And that 60% of the dogs that were followed in this study developed glaucoma. Notably, all dogs with normal irritable corneal angles did not develop angle closure glaucoma. So that's also important. If your Bouvier has normal irritable corneal angles, then the risk in your dog is, is less. They also looked at angle index, which is a measure of pectinate ligament severity. It's looking at how much of the, the irritable corneal angle is affected by the pectinate ligament dysplasia. And uh, angle index less than or equal to one increased primal angle closure glaucoma risk by 13 fold. 21% of the dogs that had this risk, uh, that had an angle index less than or equal to one developed angle closure glaucoma. So very, very important finding. Now, um, some recent studies have looked at how the irritable corneal angle changes with age. Uh, I'm, this is just a smattering of a number of studies that are looking at that. And multiple studies have shown that the prevalence of pectinate ligament dysplasia increases with age. And this has been shown in Basset Hounds, which is a Basset Hounds are, a, you know, a breed of dogs that at high risk for angle closure glaucoma like Bouvier's. Also flat-coated retrievers and retrievers and dandy Denmount Terriers. And all of them showed a positive, all three breeds showed a positive correlation of an increased incidence of pectinate ligament dysplasia with age. In addition, while Springer Spaniels, 58% of the dogs demonstrated progression of um, of pectinate ligament dysplasia severity. And a, a nut recent study out of Samoyeds also showed increased discordance between categorization um, of pectinate ligament dysplasia as a puppy and adult. So, so uh, especially with a increase um, in age. So all of these studies are suggesting that one a snapshot, one um, gonioscopy exam is likely insufficient and we should be doing multiple gonioscopy exams in dogs. So what can you do? So very, very important. Um, all of you, are, I'm sure, are very um, good about your annual OFA um, care exam, your companion animal eye registry exam. That's, you know, a very, important thing to do annually. And I'm sure many of you um, do that. And that's, that's great. Um, unfortunately, you know, doing that regular exam will only catch um, glaucoma once it's, it's fulminant. Um, it doesn't assess the irritable corneal angle at all. And so what we need to do in addition to our annual companion animal eye registry exam are gonioscopy exams. And we suggest every three years. Um, in, in order to get the most, uh, I would say, uh, the most detailed information, I would ask your ophthalmologist to use the ECBO gonioscopy grading scheme. They have a beautiful um, presentation of how to grade the irritable corneal angle, and they and they would they use the entire 
um, ear to corneal angle. They're not just looking at one quadrant or one area. Um, so this is uh, this is an important thing to do. Um, and you know, the more information we have about um, pectinate ligament dysplasia and Bouvier's, the better we can help with um, recommendations regarding breeding. The next technique I wanna discuss with you is ultrasound biomicroscopy. And this is a high resolution ultrasound of the eye. It assesses many structures. We can see some of the normal structures of the eye, including those ciliary processes that are making the aqueous humor. We can see our iris here. We can see our cornea, which is outermost clear layer of the eye. And indeed we can assess the ear to corneal angle. So here's our iris, here's our cornea, it meets, and this is where that fluid in the eye is draining out, that very important structure. And it, and what we can use uh, ultrasound biomicroscopy for is looking at the ciliary cleft, which is another structure that's important. And we can grade that as open, narrow, or closed. And so why is that important? Well, in that formative study done out of Wisconsin by Dubin and colleagues, we can see that um, three different, uh, the three different grading schemes here, here's a wonderfully, beautifully wide open and 63% of the Bouviers had an open cellular cleft. And then 30% had a narrowed to completely closed cleft. And we think that that, is um, a, well, we're gonna show that how important a risk factor that is. So a narrower closed cleft um, in Bouvier's was associated with a 20 fold increased risk of glaucoma. So 24% of dogs with that risk factor developed glaucoma. And an angle index less than one, that's that severe form of pectinate ligament dysplasia combined with a narrow or closed cleft increased angle closure risk by 28 fold. 44% of these dogs developed glaucoma. So that's a very, you know, very important finding that, you, you know, dogs with both of these factors are at very, very high risk of developing angle closure glaucoma. And so what, with that information, what can we do? So in addition to your annual OFA care exam and gonioscopy, uh, we suggest that you do ultrasound biomicroscopy as well every three years. Now this technique, gonioscopy, pretty much every ophthalmologist that you reach out to will do that. You will have to do a little bit more legwork in regards to ultrasound biomicroscopy. I would say checking with teaching hospitals first is a good way to start. Um, most teaching hospitals with an ophthalmology, um, I apologize, with an ophthalmology service will have that. Um, and if you, you know, don't have any teaching hospitals in your area, you can reach out to the, your local ophthalmologists and see if they have that technique. Many um, uh, private practices have it as well. Now, if they don't have it, um, you know, think about your travel schedule. You are going all over the country showing your beautiful Bouviers. Um, and so see if the, you go to an area um, that, that is near a teaching hospital or a, a private practice ophthalmologist that has UBM. So how much will this cost? I know, um, you know, these... Uh, caring for your Bouviers and, and ensuring that they are the best breeders possible is not an inexpensive affair. So your OFA care exam, depending on your region of the country and um, how you have it done, whether you're doing it at a dog show or um, going to a local ophthalmologist, you know, is going to run you anywhere between $50 and $100. At UC Davis, gonioscopy costs $63, so it's very um, affordable. Um, UBM is a little bit more expensive. At UC Davis, it's $260, but I think um, this is well worth the cost, and you're really looking at doing these two every three years. So you're looking at it spending about $100 per year 
um, to get this very important information about your dog's eyes. And so uh, what do we do with this information? So based on the, the Dubin study, um, we, we have recommended the following. First, dogs with angle closure glaucoma uh, should not be bred at all. Um, that is consistent with the OFA care recommendation. Um, any dogs with that have been diagnosed with um, primary angle closure glaucoma should um, be taken out of the breeding pool. If your dog has severe pectinate ligament dysplasia, remember that that increased angle closure risk 13-fold. So uh, we would suggest not breeding those. Similarly, narrowed or closed cleft on ultrasound biomicroscopy increases angle closure risk 20-fold. Um, so again, uh, would not recommend. And then, you know, if you have the combination of both, which increases the risk 28-fold, um, it doesn't make sense to breed those dogs either. What else can we do about glaucoma? I think it's very important, you know, one in a hundred Bouviers or 1.3 in a hundred Bouviers are going to get glaucoma. So we need to educate owners about the disease and, and tell them about signs to watch for. And so this um, great, um, you know, uh, flyer is something that you could provide to all your owners. Um, this is just a great educational tool, um, uh, you know, to, to help uh, owners recognize warning signs for glaucoma. And those include redness around the eyes, um, uh, the eye appears bulging, uh, if they're squinting or frequently blinking, uh, if the eye looks cloudy, if they're rubbing the eye, all of those are concerning signs that suggest they should seek um, ophthalmology care immediately. We would love to know if um, you, you know, of any dogs with glaucoma. So report those to the health committee so that we can um, make the most, we can choose um, the most important samples for our future, our future study. Uh, and then you can support canine glaucoma research. That's a couple different ways. Um, we would it would be really helpful if you could provide blood samples and pedigree information for for um, dogs with glaucoma. And then we're going to also look for um, controls that are you know older dogs that have lived their whole life without glaucoma, um, or and or if they have normal. Um, corneal angles with UBM and gonioscopy, those are going to be really important dogs as well when we conduct our genetic study. And last, uh, donate to the Bouvier study. Um, it's going to, you know, it's going to cost money to, to do this work and um, donating to that cause will really facilitate um, a study. The goal of the study is to find a risk factor um, or even the cause of glaucoma and Bouvier's. And if we find that, then we can have a genetic test, just like the beagles with the Adams 10 mutation. So, um, so that's the goal. And um, uh, I, 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 my email address, smthomasy at ucdavis.edu, or you can also send um, questions along to the health committee and just another, um, you know, the, there were several, um, uh, Bouvier owners on Facebook that um, I reached out to for with permission to use images of their dog. And again, this is a dog just, you know, very, very painful, even drooling from the pain associated with glaucoma. And then, um, you know, had a bilateral nucleation was much happier afterwards. So hopefully we can, with some of these changes in practice, we can prevent um, we can decrease the incidence of glaucoma in Bouvier's, and, and that would be a very um, good thing to do. Thank you so much for your time.